Grace and peace to you. Here we go. The peace of Christ be with you. We believe that Jesus still gives the peace that passes all understanding. Jesus is still with us. May the peace of Christ be with you. Good morning. Grace and peace to you and welcome to the service of worship, part of the ministry of Chapel in the Pines. Uh, my name is Andrew. If you will take a moment and write your names on the fellowship pads at the end of the row. I want to extend a welcome not only to those gathered here in the sanctuary, but also joining us online. And you too are able to sign in online and also give prayer requests. Um, in these envelopes, you will find blue index cards. If you have a celebration or concern that you would like to be included in the service, please write that down, place it in the offering baskets. And one final announcement, uh, if we have any visitors, you will also find one of these green cards in the folders. If you will fill this out and place it in the offering basket, we like to write you a thank you note in the week to come. I like to use my cheerful purple pen. To write those notes. Uh, don't, you know, so just fill this out, place it in the offering basket. I mean, whatever color you like, really. Uh, Will Seibert has an announcement. Will. Yes, one of the great things about this congregation is, and one of the hallmarks of this congregation is how it involves itself in the community. And we are going to have the privilege of hosting the Farrington Village Singers uh, May 2nd. And as a part of that, we would certainly want to encourage you all to come to the concert. And we will be in the fellowship hall after the service while everybody is eating and making available ourselves to sell you tickets. So we want to encourage you to come and it'll be a great concert. I'm a member of this. 
group. Mickey DePowder is not here, but I think she's, uh, she is a member of the group. And then David over here is uh, going to be a drummer for this uh, event, one of the yeah. songs. So we want to uh, highlight his presence as well. So please come. Yes. It, the, the time is 7.30. Good question. It's uh, in all of that information, since my memory doesn't tend to win, hold all that information, will be in the fellowship hall. Thank you, Will. Uh, we have an announcement from Ginny and Joel. Good morning. As part of our Earth Weekend celebrations coming up next weekend, and a part of our creation care ministry here at Chapel in the Pines, on Saturday we will begin the weekend with a blessing of the animals. That will take place from 1030 until noon outside at the pavilion, and we invite you and your friends and neighbors to bring pets, a furry, non-furry, um, <laughs> on leashes or in carriers for everyone's safety. Um, stuffies would be blessed as well. So please come and take part in this part of our creation care. Thank you. And then on Sunday, both of our worship services uh, will focus on earth care and our youth groups have written the liturgy for those services. Some of them will be participating in the leadership and we've made some lovely liturgical art. Um, between the two services, we're also having an intergenerational um, earth care focused craft and fun learning time over in the fellowship hall. So we hope you'll join us. Thank you. Now let us turn our hearts and minds to this service. The light in me sees the light that is in you. May the light of God's love be present and shine among us. Baptism today and a little poem to get us ready called Preacher in the Park for Maddie. A toddler with corn silk hair bebopped to me hiya, then pointed skyward, sun up. As birdsong cascaded down, the boy grinned, tweet tweet, then scampered away, bebopping through more days. He'll know of wars, violence, and viruses. No one passes unscathed, but. There will also be bees, butterflies, breezes, testifying to the goodness not of our making. A park becomes a makeshift pulpit if you have ears to hear. Attentiveness is prayer. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
Amen. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit. As we continue to worship, the verse called to worship, and then by singing the faith. From 1 John 3, 1. See what love God has given us, that we should be called children of God. As you are seated, I invite the family to come forward. Liz and Matt, definitely Maddie. Yeah, let's have everyone come up. I love it. We just sang of the water where the saints are made holy. And what a gift to live into this today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the baptism of a child is a special opportunity for us to all remember that we are God's children and that we are claimed by grace. So I invite you to join me in this sacrament. Jesus instituted baptism as the visible means of entry into the new covenant. Baptism is a gift from God. Baptism is a sign. That through grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are united with Christ, cleansed by his saving work, enter into the fellowship of the church, are called to a life of faith and willing obedience. Those of you baptized into Christ Jesus, how are you baptized? Into his death, as a sign that as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glorious In baptism, children also share in the benefits of our Lord's redeeming work through God's grace and the faith of the parents and of the church. For God's promise is to us and to our children. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to witness the sacrament by confessing our shortcomings to the triune God. Holy God in three persons. Help us to see clearly the in these days. Leaving us to wander in the misty land of half-truth, false compromise. Deliver us, we pray, from the God helps those who help themselves philosophy, which really is a cloak of unbelief in your redeeming and sustaining power in our lives. 
Forgive us, we pray. Friends, who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ the Lord. And Christ died for us. Christ was raised for us. Christ lives and prays for us. In his name, be at peace. Know that we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. So addressing Matt and Liz, the parents of this child, Getting ready to receive the sacrament of baptism. You present your son, Maddie, before God and this congregation. And as God embraces you within the covenant, I invite you to profess your faith in the triune God. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce the power of evil in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? And will you be Christ's faithful disciple as guided by the truth in the Holy Spirit? Will you? And do you promise to lead your children by prayer, instruction, and example until that time when they can, by grace, confirm their faith? Now, addressing the entire body of believers gathered here, including our young disciples, We are called to live into our baptismal vows for this family. So do we promise to guide and nurture Maddie by word and deed, in prayer and example, offering to him the love of Christ? And do we accept our calling to support, to nurture, and to love his parents and siblings as they are a part of our church family? Do we? So, I have a couple of gifts for you before the baptism. One of the things that we want to do is give a watchword, which is actually a couple of words. It's a verse of scripture that you may remember this day, and that we just pray that these words would live into you as your whole family takes this journey of faith. And and you too, Maddie, one day. I agree. (laughs) That is a beautiful watchword, too. (laughs) Your watchword, dear one, we've already said as a church, it's 1 John 3, 1. See what love God has for us, that we shall be called children of God. See what love God has for us, that we should be called children of God. Let us pray. Holy God, pour out your spirit upon this water poured out in the font. Remind us that water is life and that you are life eternal. As we recall the gift and grace of water, thank you for the grace and gift of this family, including Maddie, this child being brought today. May this sign and seal of a baptism Be holy to us all. 
reminding us of your love that never ends and that we are indeed your children. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Maddie, it is into the death of Christ that I baptize you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. May the power of God dwell mightily within you from this day evermore. Amen. I'm so sorry about that water, Bubba. Yeah, I want to. I want to show you your friend, your church family <laughs> online. I do. I want to show them just online. And can Can I just walk you down here so that they can take a look at you? So they can take a look at you. I know. Say hi. Look at this beautiful. This is your church family. Yes, it is. They They're there for you when you cry. They're there for you when you laugh. There for you on this whole journey because we're in it together. We are. And this is your special day and a reminder that God loves us all. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to give you back to your mama. You did such a great job. <sighs> Won't you join me in welcoming this beautiful family, this child of God? And let, has, let us share the peace with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace, Liz. Congratulations. Peace, Allie. Thank you, Matt. Peace be with you. Did you like that? Isn't it? Oh. Our first scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See, 
it is I myself. Touch and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I offer this message to our young disciples here in the sanctuary and those joining on live stream and those of us feeling young at heart. So when I was in college, one of my professors realized we were both Presbyterian. And I had not become Presbyterian until I was in high school, so I hadn't had the full experience that he had. And the first thing he said to me was, oh man, those Presbyterians, they have the best potlucks. Presbyterian women can cook. <laughs> He's a little old-fashioned. Um, but I hadn't had that experience because the church that I was part of didn't really do potlucks that often. Um, but as I was in the church longer, I learned, yeah, we, we do potlucks pretty well. And it's really nice to eat together, and it's an important part of who we are. Um, and certainly eating together was an important part of Jesus' ministry, too. In this story, you hear about Jesus coming to the disciples after his resurrection. There's still a lot of confusion and fear and terror, but he meets them where they're at, and he offers them peace, and he offers the opportunity for them to touch him and to see that he is human. And then he eats with them. And while they're eating together, he shares an important word. He says, you are to continue doing what I have done here on earth. Everything that you see in the scriptures is true. When we eat together, we not only get fed by delicious food, but gathered together with fellow disciples, we are nourished and then can be reminded that we can go out into the world and do exactly what Jesus said while he was sharing this fish with his disciples, that we can continue God's love and hope and care for the world. How about we say a prayer together? Oh, and this was also a plug to come to the potluck today. <laughs> Dear God, when we gather at table, remind us you are with us. You feed our community so we can be your hands and feet. Amen. Now I'd like to invite our young disciples here in the sanctuary to join me for Sacred Art. Good morning. A scripture will be found this morning on the New Testament section of the Bible on page 291. Do I need to back up? No, okay. Expect several of you know that the major religions of the Western world are called the people of the book, and that's us. The, uh, Islam has the Quran, and Judaism has the Torah, and we have the Holy Bible, and this was the one I was given when I joined the church many decades ago. Many, many. <laughs> <clears throat> and I determined at that time that I was going to read the whole thing. That didn't last very long. I got to the section on begats. I'm a southerner. I understand my cousin's first cousin's 
brother-in-law just had his fifth marriage. I understand all that, but the begats were too much for me. So I, I have given that up, and perhaps later on in my life I will retake that story. But all of these books are origin stories of the peoples the book expounds for. Our origin story in the Old Testament is the people wandering, coming out of Egypt and wandering through the desert and eventually battling their way into the promised land. And by the way, did you know that archeological records show that Jerusalem was felled by a mighty earthquake? I wonder if that was the same time that Joshua went through there. So, goes on with kings, good kings, bad kings, more battles, some people getting into trouble, etc. And then we come to the part of the New Testament which is about Christianity, the origin story of Christianity, and the Gospels tell us about the life and times of Jesus from his inception, a holy time, to his crucifixion, another holy time, as well as the resurrection. Then we come to the later part, which are the letters written by the apostles after they go on their, what do we call it, pilgrimages to the people. And this John, who wrote today's scripture, we don't know who he was. Was he the John of the Gospels, or was he the John who wrote the book of Revelations? We don't know that. But this is what he had to say. Let us pray. O oh God, show us the wisdom and joy of your ways, that we may know what is good and do what is right. Through Jesus Christ, your word. Amen. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who does right is righteous as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Well, uh, for little Maddie, uh, who hopefully, I bet he and Liz can hear me even now out there through the speakers, uh, we have a few more gifts that we want to share with them. Of course, the certificate of baptism. Uh, we also have this cross, which is made of leftover floorboards from this very sanctuary. And like the water of baptism is symbolic, so this is symbolic, right? We have our foundation in Christ. And it's also my practice whenever baptizing an infant to, to write that child a letter. And I imagine the parents saving this letter until about the time the child is to be confirmed. Say 12 or a teenager. And they give them this letter this little glimpse into what it was like on the day you were baptized. It is also my practice to read the letter today, on the day of baptism, as a way for us to remember our vows, that we have been called to support Maddie every step of the way, every step of the way. So, let us first pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts bring us comfort and challenge in this day as time and guide us into the future, forward in faith. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Dear Maddie, 
a couple of weeks before you were baptized on April 14th, 2024, in the year of our Lord, well, it was Easter Sunday, and I preached a sermon about God's love. Afterward, an astute gentleman wondered if I might further explain this concept. (laughs) And down the corridor of time, whenever you read this, I wonder if you too might be curious about God's love. Well, today alone, in the natural course of my day, I said that I love watching baseball, love the smell of honeysuckle, love plinking my ukulele, and love tacos. It is Tuesday. I also told people that I love them. And I use the same word, but I don't have the same feeling for ground beef and tortillas as for my children. Before my kids were born, I loved the idea of them. I was excited to meet them, but only when they came squalling into the world and I held each in my trembling arms was I instantly, utterly, overwhelmingly in love. 1 John 3, 1 reads, See what kind of love the Father has for us, that we should be called God's children. And if I, just a normal guy, can love my kids, then how much more is that true of God's love for us? That's why 1 John and other scriptures use the metaphor of God as Father. There are more metaphors metaphors in Scripture. God as mother, nursing her babies. God as shepherd, leading the flock. God as rock, providing solid ground through the storms of life. I once knew a guy who called his higher power Gus, which stood for Great Universal Spirit in the 12-step program. But when this guy was a kid, he happened to have a favorite bus driver named Gus. And the guy was cheerful and kind and always got him home safely. So Gus became an image of God's love. The point, Maddie, is that though God's love is more perfect than human love, we glimpse it through the love that we experience. A father, a mother, a bus driver a best friend, a loyal dog, a cat who's in the right mood, (laughs) a favorite aunt's hug, a waitress who calls you honey or baby, an airplane attendant who calms your fears at takeoff or landing. The point is that love abounds, for God is love, and we live and move and have our being in God. Another verse in 1 John reads, there is no fear in love. And I think that must refer to God's perfect love. For I experience a lot of fear in parenting. Maybe your parents can back me up. Someone who loves you doesn't want anything bad to happen to you. Yet as you grow, you will encounter bad things in the world, some of them caused by people who may not have been loved when they were young. That might explain some of the pain, but ultimately, suffering is a mystery. You are to be baptized into the death of Christ, which is an acknowledgement of the truth that we all die. Like Jesus, we die. It's really a remarkable statement, Maddie. And the society will do all kinds of things to try and make you forget that truth. And Jesus, why he's really interested in one thing, love. He commanded us to love as he loves us. It's a tall order, my friend. But love is our best hope. 
not merely cheerful chants against the dark, but radical love, love against hate, loving our own children, and also our neighbor's children, and our neighbor's neighbor's children, and so on and so on. Remember when I wrote that I love ukuleles and tacos, and that there are many metaphors for God in Scripture? It stands to reason, then, that though Jesus commanded us to love everyone, love might look differently, depending on the situation. Perhaps it even appears as something else. For babies, love might look like cuddling. For teenagers, love might look like patience. For someone who is suffering, love could be compassion. For someone making poor decisions, love could be an instruction. I think there are times when love looks like anger, and when love looks like humility, when we love in tears and in laughter. How do you know the difference? Well, that's part of growing up, maturing in your faith. You're technically an adult when you are 18 years old, Faith is a lifelong process, and Jesus calls us to the school of love. So when I think of the phrase, love of God, I think of the great and beautiful complexity each one of us holds within us, either to harm or to heal. But when we reach for the best that is in us, which is the divine image, that is love. Love shown in whatever form it takes. Love that is worth any effort we could make. For this is part of God's plan for redemption. As 1 John puts it, for what will be revealed. Well, Maddie, is this letter getting too preachy? (laughs) I admitted that it started in the part from a sermon. So I'm almost done. I want to close with something yet another wise gentleman told me years ago, when I was probably around your age, as you read this. This gentleman spoke simple words, yet as I have grown, these words have deepened in meaning. And I share them with you. Maddie, God loves you, and so do I. This is a sermon and a sentence, my friend. God loves you, and so do I. Your pastor and friend, Andrew.
Let us pray. Holy God, you have called us and claimed us as your children. Take what we have to give and who we are. We will be a part of sharing your love with the world. Bless us and keep us in the name of love. Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, the gifts just keep giving in this service. Uh, we have, Keith, why don't you come up too? Yeah, yeah. We have an uh, amazing opportunity, and I'll let Tim introduce it. Oh. I would like to introduce Janet Askew, a person for whom many of you need no introduction. You either know her or know of her. <laughs> so, first, I'd like to Say hello to Janet, and thanks for coming, and her husband, Keith. <laughs> Janet has been with us, and we have been with her for 15 years, which is why she's here, of uh, 15th anniversary. And what I wanted to express my appreciation for, and Jerry's before me as treasure, is that Janet's work here, she not only lends her wonderful expertise in education and accounting, 
she also finds this very much a ministry. This is not just about dollars and recording, but it's very much about a caring for this church, which we respond to and very much appreciate. So thank you very much. And Andrew. So Janet, on behalf of the personnel committee, I have a gift for you and for Keith. And I also have something to share for you. And again, to read aloud to everyone else. The personnel committee of Chapel in the Pines, comprised of volunteers from the body of the congregation, in recognition and profound appreciation of the distinguished service by Janet Askew, hereby resolves the following. Whereas Janet has been the accountant of Chapel in the Pines since 2009, and whereas she has faithfully and with honor, integrity, and distinction accounted for remarkable financial growth in that time, and whereas the volume of emails that she has sent <laughs> to staff and volunteers alike is a number so large it is known only to the heart of God, <laughs> and whereas she has kept meticulous metrics scrupulous statistics, reliable records, fastidious financial facts, and whereas she labored for the church as a second job, yet always gave Chapel in the Pines her attention and talent, and whereas despite being an obvious numbers person, she has also approached people with kindness and care, modeling a genuine spirit of fellowship, and whereas she has largely worked unseen, keeping late office hours. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the personnel committee of Chapel in the Pines before God and this congregation formally extends our heartfelt and abiding gratitude and appreciation of Janet in this public Sunday service in the 15th year of her employment. And, resolve further, we give thanks to God every time we think of Janet's efforts to serve our congregation with her energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. And, resolve even further, <laughs> we pray that Janet and Keith, her dearly beloved, will enjoy life and love with their two sons and beautiful family. In the name of God, the ultimate accountant, who is the counter of stars and galaxies and even the very hairs on top of our heads. Hereby presented this April 14th, 2024 in the year of our Lord. Please join me in expressing our gratitude. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as you know, I'm a behind the scenes person. I'm not a public speaker. I <laughs> like being behind the scenes, but uh, it's nice to put a face to everyone. I've, like you said, I've sent many, many emails, so I feel like I know people. Just don't, haven't met you in person, a lot of people. But thank you for this. I really appreciate it. Janet will, and Keith will be joining us at the potluck. So another, another nod to the potluck, another way. And you get a chance to, to speak to them, I hope, I hope and pray. Uh, a couple of prayer requests, I invite you to join me in prayer. For the grace given for baptizing children, including Maddie Mays, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Janet Askew and for her faithful service, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Prayers, continued prayers for Doug Fike and the loss of his mother. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Prayers for Marilyn Goodberlay, who is in the UNC hospital with heart issues. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Let us continue to pray. 
God of abundant grace, we gather today just as your first disciples gathered in the wake of resurrection, in joy and wonder and disbelief. We remember that whenever we gather in your name, you are here in our midst, offering us the comfort of your presence and the assurance of your love. And we give you thanks that like those first disciples, you give us a community to practice our faith, to worship, to baptize, to pray, to eat at table together. Make this community where we explore what it means to live into your love. We remember that when the risen Christ first appeared to his disciples, he offered them peace. Our world is deeply in need of your peace, O oh God. A peace that is not only the absence of conflict, but the presence of wholeness for all people. We pray for victims of war in Ukraine and Gaza and around the world. Put an end to violence, Lord. Teach us to recognize our shared humanity, our shared status as your beloved children, each of us created in your image. Lead each of us to prioritize peace, both in our own homes and in the communities and in the wider world. We pray for all who sit in seats of power, fill their hearts with compassion and their decisions with wisdom that all may have the chance not only to survive, but to flourish. Most of all, God, save us from despair. Open our eyes to see the signs of resurrection, life that are all around us. Plant hope within us and help us to nurture its tender shoots that it might grow more robust each day. May we begin to imagine the future of your peace. Loving God, we pray for members of our community who need your care. Ease the suffering of the sick and speed the healing of those in recovery. Comfort all those who mourn and bring rest to all who are worn down. Surround the isolated with love and soothe the troubled minds of the anxious. Lord of life, remind us of our call to love one another and as you have loved us, with a love that casts out fear and creates community. Grant us energy to serve one another with humility and hope and keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes again and all things are made new. We pray this in the name of Christ as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will, thy will be, done, be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us give this day our daily bread, bread and, forgive and forgive us our debts, as, as we, we forgive our debtors. debtors. And lead, lead us, us not to temptation, temptation, but deliver, but deliver us, from us from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, and the, kingdom and, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Once again, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we sing the faith.
As mentioned, I, you are most cordially invited to our potluck. It's wonderful if you brought something to share. If you have not, just come as our guest. You are also invited uh, to remember those who don't have enough to eat. In this potluck, we'll be collecting what we call pennies for hunger, which are simple donations, perhaps change or bills that you have, and they go to support uh, ministries that, that feed people not only here in Chatham County, but across the Salem Presbytery, even indeed across the world. Um, there is a basket in the back of the church that you can make that offering on your way out, or the young disciples will collect it as part of our potluck. They will. They're quite persuasive, I tell you. <laughs> I invite you to join me in our table blessing. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, our guest to be, and bless these gifts bestowed by thee. Bless thy dear ones everywhere. Keep them in thy loving care. Amen. Beloved, what love the Father has for us, that we would be called children of God. This we know as we await the full revelation of God's grace, that we have that love and we share that love. So go out to love fiercely and boldly and tenderly. Go out to be makers of love, that you will be known to whoever you encounter. And do this in the name of God and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.